What's up guys, welcome to the Borderlands Bakery YouTube channel. A couple weeks ago, I created a blog post that went over how I stored and organized my cookie cutters, and a lot of you had additional questions. You wanted to know what my favorite cutters are, what the differences are between the plastic ones, 3D, cutted, 3D printed ones, as well as the metal ones. So we'll go through that in this video and I'll talk about some of my favorite cutters and why I like them. I'm not gonna to talk too much about the specifics on storage. I'll link you to the blog post below where I specifically talk about what I use and how I display them and how I organize them. So I'll link that for you, check it out. Today I'm going to show you the types of cookie cutters and answer some of your questions that you had for me on Instagram. There are three main types of cookie cutters that are popular today. The one that I think we're all most familiar with are the metal cutters. These are usually more accessible in stores like Michael's or Joann's, and they're actually the most affordable. So there are cutter companies out there that offer them for about one to two dollars. I'll link some of my options down in the description box below. Expand that to see all the details. And they get the job done and they work great. They have a sharp cutting edge that cuts through dough really well. I think the only thing to look out for because these are metal cutters and they're very thin pieces of metal, they are somewhat pliable. So if you're using really, really cold dough or you have mix-ins like chocolate chips in your dough, sometimes that can warp the cutter. That's going to be a risk no matter what kind of cutter you use unless if you're using a very, very strong certain type of 3D printed cutter. So metal cutters, most easily accessible, and I would also say, in general, the most affordable option. The second type of cutters that I'm going over today are basically molded plastic cutters. These are generally one piece, there are no seams. These are the Sweet Sugar Bell cutters specifically. I absolutely love them. They are also incredibly affordable, on par with metal cutters, and sometimes, if you get the big sets from Cali, they are very um, affordable. So you can get like animal cutters or cutters for all kinds of occasions. Sweet Sugar Bell, check them out. I believe they are also at Michael's and Joann's. And I really like them. Similar challenges when it comes to flexibility and softness as metal cutters, but if you are aware and you be careful, these will last a really long time. The other difference is because they are plastic, if you get them under really, really warm or boiling water, they're going to uh, warp. So please be careful when you wash plastic cutters, hand wash only, use dish soap and warm water, never piping hot or boiling. The last type of cutter I want to show you today are 3D printed cookie cutters. There are so many shops out there that offer 3D printed cutters and every shop has a different style. I will list some of my favorite shops below, but in general, what you can expect is you can see the layers of printing on that cutter because it is printed on a surface layer by layer. And because they're 3D printed, you can get any shape you want and a lot of cookie cutter companies out there allow the ability to customize your cutters. And a lot of these companies are also mom and pop shops, so it's a great way to support small businesses. I'd offer that because most of us are small businesses who create 3D printed cookie cutters, they will be a little pricier than mass produced metal or um, extruded molded plastic options. I do love 3D printed cutters because if you get a good one, it's very, very strong, solid with a nice cutting edge that slices through chocolate chips quite well. Um, there's a huge range when it comes to quality of 3D cookie cutters. And in many cases, you get what you pay for. So my recommendation is try out a couple of different types of shops, see what their style is, see how it behaves with your dough, and then, you know, stick with a shop or, you know, keep supporting a bunch of different shops. It's up to you. I don't have one of these, but we're gonna find a picture and throw it up for you. At Michael's for a while, they carried metal cutters with like a rubber grip. 
Those are great as well if you can find shapes that you want with that rubber grip and they are affordable. They're only like two or three dollars for each cutter. In my cutter organization blog post, I kind of mentioned how I'm trying to keep my cutter collection under control. And if you do this for a living, you'll notice that your cutter collection can grow um, very quickly without you really even noticing. So I promised myself that I was only going to have as many cutters as it fit in the containers that I own. I'm not going to have any overflow of cutters. One of the questions that I kept getting over and over in, in the DMs was, what cutters do you feel like are must-haves and what do you recommend beginners start out with? When it comes to basic cutter sets, there are shapes and sizes that I recommend a lot of beginner cookie decorators own so that you have plenty of options. Now I know in today's world, there are a gazillion shapes of cookie cutters and if you want it, someone's probably got it. But if you're just starting out and you want to sort of keep that collection under control, there are some basic shapes that I think everybody can use and that you can utilize in creative ways to get the various themes that people want. I've got one box that's full of basic shapes. And when I think about what I use most frequently, these basic shapes are incorporated into many of my sets. When you have a basic shape, I'm talking about things like squares, rectangles, hexagons, modern geometric shapes, or even plaques that have like florals on the side or something like that. But to talk through some of the high level basic cutters I think everybody should own, I think everybody should own a set of circle cookie cutters. I actually have two sets. One is the plastic molded without any seam sets, and the other one is a 3D printed set by Brighton Cutters. My friend Amanda makes amazing quality cookie cutters, and I love her nesting basic sets. You get small cutters to larger cutters. And bonus, when you get like large circle cutters, you can also use this um, after you bake like a drop cookie and kind of swirl it around the drop cookie to make sure that you get like perfectly circular drop cookies. So get cutters that are multi-purpose and you can put pretty much any design on a circle cutter. Yes, circles are a little hard to flood, but practice, 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 and you will get better at them. And then you can use techniques like royal icing transfers or using a projector, watercolor, to paint on the circle and make it whatever design you want. I'm going to throw up a couple of pictures in the past of themes I've done on circles to give you guys an idea of how they can be utilized and designed for almost anything. Aside from circles, what's super popular in modern cookie decorating are hexagons. Hexagons are a good kind of um, all-purpose shape and it can cover so many different... <laughs> hexagons are really good generic shapes that you can use for so many different occasions. People love using hexagons for like monograms and weddings, but hexagons can also be used for puzzles, for babies, anything. Anything you can do on a circle cutter, you can do on a hexagon cutter. It just depends on what kind of base shape you want to start out with. I also have the <laughs> Brighton Cutters uh, hexagon nesting set. And I also have this uh, pen, 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 pentagon, 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 um, shaped cutter from Sweet Sugar Bell. This is a single plastic um, molded or extruded type of cutter. I use this very frequently. It's also really good for like a jeans pocket. And you can also Frankenstein your cutter. So you can chop off the top and make like a trapezoid if you want, for example. In addition to circles and hexagons, um, squares also fall into that basics category. And again, this is another Brighton Cutters uh, stacking set. She doesn't pay me. I'm just saying this because I love her cutters. So if you wanna check out Amanda's cutters, I've linked them for you down below. They're great. One of the other shapes that I feel like is a must have for me, and I actually use this frequently, are sticks. You can do anything with sticks. You can do any theme with sticks. You can make like Marvel Iron Man sticks or like farm animal sticks. I promise you, if you Google like farm animal cookie sticks or wedding cookie sticks or Marvel cookie sticks, something something cookie sticks, and just see what the images show up, you're gonna be very surprised at some of the ideas that you see. Make sure that if you're copying somebody's design, just credit them appropriately. I'm sure the artist would appreciate that. 
cats. Cat cookie sticks, so you can really find anything. Cute. Oh, see? You could do all kinds of things. Just make sure you find a rectangular one. Yeah, are those Halloween cookie sticks? Yeah, Halloween cookie sticks, Christmas cookie sticks. Let's talk about cookie sizing. Many of my friends have very strong opinions about how large or small cookies should be, and I'm here to tell you there is no right or wrong answer. It is whatever you prefer. So you might have to go through several rounds of testing and just figuring out what you like when it comes to size and thickness of cookies and that will change how your cookies bake. So make sure you adjust your baking parameters appropriately. For me, I have two primary sizes that I work with in my business. We talk about the concept of really consolidating your cookie cutter so you don't have like way too many cookie cutters. I like to own cookie cutters around the two, two and a half inch length size range and four inch length size range-ish. The reason why I like to do that is I bake on standard, I think these are half sheet size pans, and these are um, silicone baking sheets that I get from either Costco or Amazon. We'll throw all the links down below. And my goal is if I offer minis, my minis are about two inches in across, and I like to fit 24 on a standard half sheet tray. If I am baking, quote, full size cookies, I want to make sure that I can fit 12 on a standard half sheet baking tray. My best advice for you when it comes to cookie cutter sizing, especially when you're purchasing from, for example, a mom and pop 3D cookie cutter company, is to like take a screenshot of the cookie cutter shape Crop it all the way so that the sides are like um, totally flush against the edges. And then put it into photo editing software, make it like three inches length or whatever the length and width are, print it out. Now you can see in real life how big it is instead of having to guess. And if you need any help, make sure you ask these companies in advance how their sizing works. Some people measure straight up and down, some people measure like uh, diagonally, and depending on how they measure, you're gonna get a different measurement, right? So if I measure diagonally, obviously it's gonna be longer than if I measure just straight up and down, for example. When I'm buying cookie cutters, and this is just for my sanity, I like to avoid cutters that have a lot of detailed small areas. When it comes to picking cutters, I uh, am very particular about the ones that I buy. I tend to stick to cutters without too many small little details because it's very hard to get the dough out of those tiny details. So this is actually one of my favorite cutters, but it's hard to work with when it comes to small details. You can tell that there are really tiny um, leaf areas and if your dough is not perfectly cold or if it sticks to your cutter it becomes more challenging to release it. I always advise people to dip their detailed cutters into flour before cutting out your shapes to help it release a little bit easier. You can compare these details with cutters that are more rounded with larger areas that are not as detailed. The most detailed thing on this dog is the tail and the risk is sometimes when you pull it out or you try to punch the dough out the tail kind of falls off. So just be aware of that when you're selecting your cutters. Before I leave you, I wanna give you one last tip about cookie cutters. Because 3D printed cookie cutters are just so popular right now, um, we forget and sometimes put them in the dishwasher causing them to warp. My friend Malik has this technique where he can help you fix warped cutters. So I'm gonna drop the link for you here and you can check out his tutorial on how to do that. Hope you guys like this video. If you have any questions or comments or you wanna hear about any other different tools or maybe ask me to do a review, I would love to do that. Drop your ideas in the comments down below and we will see you in the next video.